I say example one, but we're gonna do a couple. This is example one of talking about solving or subtracting. Your directions for these problems are gonna be to solve each equation and then you're going to check your work. You're going to be like, well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to talk about it. And actually, we've already talked about how to check our work. We just never actually talked about it in this context. But you've actually already done it. So here's our first problem. X minus three equals negative five. My goal is to isolate X. There's so many ways to think about how we're doing this problem. Some of you might be able to be like, uh, might be able to tell me like, oh, I already know what the answer is just by looking at the problem. That's fine and all, but eventually we're gonna do some harder problems. And if you don't know how to go do, the, do these problems step by step, you won't, you're gonna have difficulty doing the rest. So please follow along. So here in this problem, we have x minus three equals negative five. I need to know what is x. If you notice, this problem is a subtraction problem. My goal is to get x by itself. In other words, I gotta get rid of this negative three. One way to get rid of that negative three, well, the, the only way to get rid of that negative three is to make it become zero. Because you'll be left with x plus zero and x plus zero would just be x, or x minus zero, it's the same thing. So my goal is to get rid of negative three, but the question is how am I gonna do, how am I gonna do that? In order to get rid of that negative three, we gotta use, again, what's called an inverse operation. So since I'm subtracting three in this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three to it. I don't know if, you got, if when you guys were younger, you get did problems like three plus three is six. Or, you know, three minus three is zero, where you had them vertically lined up. That's kind of what we're doing here. What happens when I get negative three and combine it with a positive three? Since they are opposites, they are going to cancel out, they become zero. But again, you do not need to write down zero because it's just, I mean, it's not there, it's not existing. It's gonna be just X. So we have, only thing we have left on this side is X. But because of our addition or subtraction property of equality, what I, like what I said, what we do to one side I have to do to the other. Since I added three on this side, I'm going to add three on this side. And some people want to like to do it, like they like to break it in half to show you where the equal sign is. So here's the left side, here's the right side. So yeah, throughout the lessons on videos and in class, I'll say what's on the left side. In this case, it was X minus three. What's on the right side? Negative five. The equal sign divides your left and right sides. So when I added these two together, they canceled out, they gave me zero. So I'm left with X on the left side, I'm gonna bring down this equal sign, and I'm left with negative five plus three. Give you guys a couple of seconds to determine what that number is. While you do that, I want you to write, to write this down as well. That right here we are using We are using the addition property of equality because we added three to both sides. Now back to our final answer. X is going to equal 
negative 2. So we did the first part. We did solve each equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check our answer. We want to make sure, are we correct? This is how you're going to check your work. You're going to take the original problem, in this case, x minus 3 equals negative 5. But it goes back to when we did evaluating expressions. We know, now know that we, we now know that x is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to go to wherever x is. I'm going to replace it with negative 2. So down here when I'm checking the work, I'm going to replace x. And again, because I'm replacing the variable with the number, I'm putting it in parentheses. Negative 2 minus 3 equals negative 5. Now, again, take the time. Is negative 2 minus 3 equal to negative 5? If we start at negative 2, you got to go to the left, 3 units. If you're looking at a number line, that number is going to be negative 5. So negative 5 does equal, oop, I can't see it. Negative 5 does equal negative 5. And that is going to be your final answer. Well, that's not your final answer. This is your final answer, my bad. Don't forget to circle your final answer as well. It also helps when I'm going around watching to see what you're doing. But if this is a true statement in the end, negative 5 does equal negative 5. Here's my check mark. It's a true statement. That means this was the correct answer. If I ended up putting an X here, that would mean that negative 2 is not the answer. And I have to go back and rework it. All right, so we have the second problem here, 9 equals y plus 28. Again, our goal is to get this y by itself. Why? Because that's what the lesson is telling us to do. Well, that, and again, we want to prepare you guys to do the more difficult problems when we have two-step equations or multi-step, meaning more than one or two. So we want to get y by itself, but you see we have this plus 28 here. I got to get rid of this. 28 that's being added to y. Again, we can't combine them because they're not like terms. So our goal is to get rid of this 28. And the way to get rid of it is to do the opposite of adding 28, which is to subtract 28. Because what's going to happen is 28 minus 28. What is that? It's 0. So you're left with y plus 0. But again, we don't need that plus 0 because anything added to 0 is itself. So on the right side, on the, yeah, on the right side we're left with y. But what I do to one side, I need to do to the other. So I have, if I subtracted right, my bad, my bad. If I subtracted 28 on the right side, I need to subtract 28 on the left side. So I'm left with 9 minus 28, which is going to be a negative. 19. So y equals negative 19. Now, you could also rewrite it as y equals negative 19. I personally just have, I like to have my variables on the left side, so that's just me, but this is still correct. We are not done because we need to check our work. So I take the original problem, but instead of y, I'm replacing it with that negative. 19. Negative 19 plus 28 is going to be 9. So 9 does equal 9. This is a true statement. So again, our definition for solution was a value that makes an equation true. If I plugged 9, negative 19 in, it made my statement true. 9 equals 9. That is a true statement. So the answer of y equals negative 19 is the correct answer. We're going to do another one. We have n plus 3 equals negative 7. Again, our goal is to get n by itself. How are we going to get n by itself? Well, again, what's happening to the n? n is being added with 3. 
But again, we want to get n by itself, so we got to get rid of this positive 3. Again, inverse operations. Because 3 is being added, I want to get rid of it, so I'm going to use the inverse operation of addition, which is subtraction. 3 minus 3 is 0. It is gone. They cancel out. So I'm left with n equals. Again, we can't bring down the negative 7 because because of our properties of equality. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other. So bring down that. We'll write the negative 3. So negative 7 minus 3. It's going to be a negative number. 7 and 3 give me 10 or negative 10. So n equals negative 10. We're going to check the work. I'm going to take the original problem, but anywhere I have n, I'm going to write it with negative 10. So negative 10 plus 3. Since the bigger number is a negative, our final answer should still be a negative. And then combine it with that positive 3, you should get negative 7. Again, so negative 7 does equal negative 7. That is a true statement. So we are done with this problem because since it's a true statement, n does equal negative 10. What I recommend is doing these on your own. doing these on your own. This is not going to be your homework. Your homework is going to be on Delta Math. But I'd rather you guys try some problems before moving on. If you have any questions, please email me.